welcome to Lombardo Talk. I'm Steve Lombardo. My guest today is Mr. Phil Panacchia. He's the owner of Nudo Fitness, a fitness trainer who's trained over 1,000 people and personally trained himself over 50,000 hours. He's a former Mr. Staten Island and he's a bodybuilding champion who has competed on a national level. Most importantly, he's my trainer. Phil, what can people do to improve their situation? Uh, well, first of all, people have to be more aware of what they're eating, all right? Um, we live in a very uh, high, stressful environment, and there's a lot of processed foods, and, and we're in this, so this constant pressure to make money and move fast and always think about what's next. So I think the main thing is people can do to get a level of control over their lives is to keep a workout journal, all right? Now, by keeping a, uh, a workout journal and a nutrition journal, um, they will be more aware of what they're eating all right, and how the body responds. And that's very, very important. All right, so um, whatever people eat should be written down. Whatever goes into the body, written down. And that will make them more aware. Sometimes we eat more than we think. And by writing everything down, we'll let you know what you're eating and how your body responds to a particular food. Let me ask you a question. I know that personally I have a little bit of an elevated cholesterol situation. What, how can a journal help me to monitor my cholesterol and improve my situation so that I don't have heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, all the things that go along with the high cholesterol? All right, well, first, you, first thing you could do is uh, to try to eat smaller meals more frequently, Steve. The body will digest it. A lot of people don't realize that by how much you digest is very important. The amount of food that you the amount of protein that you consume is not important how much you digest and assimilate is. That's what's being utilized in the body. If you eat too much at one meal, the body rejects it and goes out, okay, out of your body and doesn't get used. So I would like people to start off by having uh, 20 to 35 grams of protein every three hours. Is this dependent on how much you weigh? For instance, a smaller person will be less, or a larger person will be more, something like that? Yeah, I'm, the bigger you are, the more protein you should have, but I think no more than 35 grams of protein because your body will not digest it. So anywhere between 20 and 30, depending on the size of your body, per three hours. Fine. Okay, so now I want to increase the protein in my diet. I know that it's not a good idea to just have a, a cranberry muffin and call it a day. So specifically, what should I have? Should I have steak? Should I have eggs? What's a good protein source? Um, well, I think the highest biological proteins like red meat, raw milk and eggs are closest to the human anatomy, therefore they have a high biological rating. So when someone says that, you know, I could get the same amount of protein of grams, as, say from soy, as I can from red meat, even though it's the right amount of grams, it's not the same amino acid complexion. And the red meat is closer to, to the human anatomy, therefore, because it resembles it, the body responds more. Um, I think eggs is the seed of life. Um, the unborn chicken, I mean, is, is very powerful. It's the balance of fat and protein that helps it assimilate. So to digest protein, you need an adequate amount of balance of fat. So people don't realize that. They go on this, you know, idea that, and I think it's because we've, it's been, we've been brainwashed to think that fat is bad for you. Uh, natural fats are incredible for your body. It's, it's true. Yeah. See, a lot of times people say, I'm on a low fat, I'm on a no fat diet. Right. So you're saying that could be bad. It's very bad because your body needs fat to digest protein. If you don't digest protein, you don't utilize it. It doesn't get assimilated. So uh, by having the uh, proteins that are closest to the human anatomy, your body will absorb the protein better. So if someone was to have tuna or someone was to have a steak, the steak would be a lot more powerful effect in the body because of the fat content. And the fat nourishes your glands. If the glands are not nourished, you do not produce hormone. If the glands don't produce enough hormones, the body will slowly uh, re regress. So now you and I have been working out for over three months now. Right. Diet is very important. What so you're basically 80%, saying. 80 percent is diet. If I wasn't eating correctly, then I'm going to be chasing my tail. Yeah, I mean, exercise is better than no exercise. But uh, I think nutrition, I say again, exercise is king, nutrition is queen, all right? So you, you, need, to, you need to balance the two. Uh, but I think that um, if you ate healthy and even did a moderate amount of exercise, I, I, above all, eating healthy, I would say for someone who has a disease, 
nutrition would be number one for me. So With, let's get on that, as right. far as disease. Right. Now, we know that I have Parkinson's, Parkinson's for like five years. I know personally, over the last three months, I felt a lot better. How can exercise help Parkinson's disease? Well, first of all, Parkinson's disease has to do with the nerves, right? All right, when the nerves are suppressed, the muscles don't function right. So by strengthening the muscles and getting blood into the body and circulating the blood through the body, the nerves come to life a little bit and they allow the muscle to work. So it's almost like when someone, when you, you have the muscle that's not being worked, so if I put my arm right now in a sling and it did nothing, take the biggest man in the world, you put him in a sling. The muscle atrophy. After one year, he wouldn't be able to move the arm, much right. less use it. Right. He wouldn't be able to move a five pound dumbbell. So we got to move our bodies. By moving the body, the blood flows, but the nerves control the muscles. So the Parkinson's disease, so the, whatever the disease, I'm not a doctor, but I do know that the disease creates uh, a neurological problems in the body because the nerves are no longer doing their job. By getting that blood moving, getting the body moving, using the muscles, getting the blood flow, it's waking everything up in the body. Now, Steve, you've been working out three months with Parkinson's. Now, you've taken medicines, right? Right. Now, in three months training, and say the truth, three months training, compared to medicines that you've taken, which did more? Well, to answer the question, the medicines function differently than the workout. The oh. medicine will pretty much help the lack of dopamine, so it's a chemical answer. But the workout helps the glands to function, helps my circulatory system, my overall sense of well-being, and my ability to move, because it's a movement disorder. But taking the medicine, as opposed to taking the medicine and exercising, how much percent better are you? I'd say about 50 to 75 percent better. Okay. Again, it's, it's like saying, what's better, oil change or putting gas in your car? You really need both. Right, you need both. You really understand what it is. There are certain diseases they understand really well, but Parkinson's is one of those diseases they really don't understand all that well. Right, they don't understand enough about it yet, but I guarantee you that if the body was in harmony, you would not have gotten Parkinson's. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's one be, way of looking at it. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows what the answer, don't have enough information on that. But I do know that something, you say like the L-dopamine is too high or too low in the body. Too low, right. Right. But by exercising, you could balance that out. By eating the right nutrition, you could at least fight to get your body back in harmony. There's no question in my mind the human body is meant to be exercised, and the exercise produces good results. But let's talk about other diseases. What about um, multiple sclerosis? Do you have anybody with MS? I have a guy right now I'm training with MS. His name is Sam, and um, he had a stroke, and the stroke led to the MS. And uh, I have him on, he's actually on my Instagram, and we have videos of him, but he came to the gym with a cane, and uh, he was not able to walk, he couldn't move right, and what I did is I got him to start getting his body stronger, started resistance training. He tripled his strength. He don't, no longer needs a cane. Now, is the disease gone? No. But he could move and get in and out of his car. He could walk up steps that he couldn't do before. Now, what you're saying right now is the most important thing out of everything. Being a person who works out, being a person with the disease, having a disease and feeling yourself going downhill is a very, very bad feeling. And when you can reverse it and start to think, all right, I was going downhill and now I'm not, and now I'm doing a little bit better, that's worth more than anything in the world. Yes, absolutely. So what about uh, diabetes? Is working out helpful for diabetes? It's very common to have diabetes these days. Yeah, I mean, um, I had my A1C checked about, uh, I don't know, five or six months ago. And I went to, um, I went to Dr. Calamir. He's an endocrinologist and he said, your A1C is a little high, I don't like it. You got 6.2. And um, I, uh, I, w I refused to accept the fact that I might get diabetes. My uncle had lost his leg. I something mentally just said, I said to myself, I am not gonna allow myself to get diabetes. So right there, it's a very positive attitude. Don't you think a positive attitude is the most it's important weapon? It's so everything, you, you know, your, bot, your mind will manifest what you think. Thoughts become reality. So I, I think it, therefore I am, Buddha. So now what I did is I, first of all, I did research. And first thing I th did was I realized that when your body weight is a little too high, the pancreas doesn't function as good. So I, I took 10% of my weight off. I went from 232 to 215. 
That was one big step. Then I supplemented my diet with alpha lipoic acid and cinnamon. I did research again which supplements chromium picolinate that would help to process sugar better and uh, create more insulin sensitivity in my body. I did that and I developed the walking program. So, I, and I also reduced my starches. I cut my starches in half. Let me diverge for a second. Well, uh, I'm sorry, well, let me just finish this. The test was done three months later. Three months later, my A1C went from 6.2 to 5.9. Three months after that, it went to 5.7. Excellent. Now, that is the difference down the line of me losing my leg or not. But it came from me thinking properly, being determined not to follow what doctors say, because the doctor would have never pushed me to do, lose the weight. He would have just probably eventually gave me a medicine. But I fought in my mind. I said, I'm not going to get this disease. First thing I did. Second thing, I did research. But I became my own doctor. And I found a holistic way to heal my body. So that when people say, no, I can't, it's because they're just allowing themselves not to have to think and work hard for themselves to get a better result. So your positivity was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, your mind has got to achieve anything in life, you got to see it in your mind first. But I was determined. And people even said to me, you got it in your family, you're going to get it. And I said, no, I'm not. I didn't say maybe I won't, I'm not. You made up your mind. Yeah. I remember my, you know, my family telling me, listen, you might get it. Your grandma's got it. Your uncle's got it. Your cousin has it. And I said, no. You refuse you to accept it. That's it. So something inside me, my fear of the disease, my fear of losing limbs, my fear of other stuff that could happen. You were motivated. Yeah. I was just determined not to get it. But from that thinking, bred the right, you know, thinking came first. And then, then the research but I took control. Knowledge will get rid of your fears. If you have a fear, learn more about it. Do research yourself. And sometimes what you read might not even be true either. You have to look at things objectively, but question everything. In all fairness, you're not the average person. You are a person who has achieved the level of Mr. Staten Island and you're a bodybuilding champion. This is somebody who has worked on a physical problem and has turned things around so that you're at the top of your field. Yes. So you, you've experienced success, which probably tends to make you more positive. And the fact you say, well, I'm not going to accept it. There's probably pe people out there, they go to the doctor and the doctor says, you have this disease. They accept it. That's it. Right. They accept it. And they, they, or some people don't have the willpower to, to make the changes in their lifestyle. But I say, I'm more scared of getting a disease. If you see somebody that has diabetes, or people that have blood pressure, or any type, and you watch them age, it's very scary. That scares me enough that I'm gonna do anything it takes to make sure that doesn't happen to me. And it's not just a matter of, hey, well, I was successful in bodybuilding, therefore, you know, I'm gonna be positive. Right now, I got nine surgeries in my body. I had my sugar that was high. My, my feet were almost turning reddish from the lack of circulation. I have uh, nine rips in my body. I have 10 herniated discs in my, so I have a lot of things going on right now. All I'm doing is taking the willpower that I had to make, to make me win bodybuilding shows and I'm taking it to help me heal. I'm not, but it, this is the key. But I, when I go to the doctor I, and he says to me, a one is too high, in my mind, I'm getting it down. I actually told Dr. Kalamia, I'm gonna get it down. And he said, I don't know, maybe your body's not, I said, I will get it down. So first thing people have to do is first of all, don't put a doctor on a pedestal. He's a human being, like everybody else. He has a little bit more knowledge about the body. Mostly he has knowledge about medicines. He doesn't have too much knowledge on nutrition. Start to do research. But if you start to take care of yourself and eat the right foods and exercise, I bet you in 90 days, any person on this planet can improve their body and their health. It, it doesn't matter if it's cholesterol, if it's blood pressure, or if it's sugar. But you have to take control and you have to take responsibility. So if something you're scared about, gain knowledge, the fear will go away. Okay, so you've talked about diet and exercise. What about supplements? Um, I think in a perfect world, you wouldn't need supplements. But I do believe that you have to have five or six small meals a day to be healthy. So just for the convenience factor, I think having maybe three meals and two protein shakes a day would be nice. So because a lot of people can't prepare meals or they don't have the money for it. 
So what I like to do is I mix my almond milk with peanut butter and protein powder. It's about 200 calories, it's about 30, 40 grams of protein, and I have that twice a day in between my meals. So I have three meals and two shakes a day. Are there differences in protein powder? Are some better than others? Yeah, well, I'm a believer in milk and egg protein. Now, there's whey out there. I think whey is overrated. Um, I think that milk and egg is the best protein that you could have. It's the most natural. But milk and egg is not even made that much no more. And if, it, if you do get it, it's probably a little bit more expensive. I think whey is, is really is a useless, in my opinion. So when it comes to whey, you would say no whey? Is that fair? I would say that... Um, it's okay, but there's better proteins, specifically milk and egg. Well, that sounds good. Whatever you're doing, it must be working. But I have a theory that the intensity of your workout when you were going for Mr. Staten Island, I think I took its toll. Is that right or wrong? Yeah, well, I mean, took its toll as far as what? Injuries? Yeah, long term. Sure. Any, any great athlete, football players, wrestlers, um, that use their body to extreme measures are going to have to pay a price. And I do it again. So right now, if I had, a, you know, I was, I was 15 years old, I'd do the same thing again. That's when you started training, 15? I started 11. 11. Yeah. Well, wow, that's dedication. Yeah. So I think that, listen, you're on this planet for 7 to 80 years if you're lucky. You go for your dreams. You reach for the stars. Life's too short to just follow what everybody else does. I want to be the chief, not the Indian. So if I have a dream, I, I went after my dream. It brings to mind a quotation of the sled dog route. The sled dogs, they say, unless you're the lead dog, the view never changes. Yeah, that's right. I like that one. That's very I, good. I kind of live by it. Yeah, well, it's, you, you know, you want to, you wanna, all the answers in life are inside you already. The answers that you have for your life. Um, just because I have physical pain in my body because of reaching a championship level doesn't mean I have any regrets. It's part of it. It's a sacrifice. You're a warrior, all right? But you went after your dreams. And you did something that most people can never do in a lifetime, even think about doing. So uh, when, I, when I take great athletes and they come to me and they're older, first thing I tell them is that you did it. You did something that most people on this planet could never do and nobody did. So people say, oh, I see Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's older now. Yeah, he's older. We all get old and we all die. He'll still that's, kick your butt. That's life. Right. He still, still looks phenomenal. Now, does he look the way he did? No. The guy's got injuries just like me and everybody else, any other form of bodybuilder. But he did something that will be remembered forever. A you know, hundred years from now, people are still going to know who Arnold Schwarzenegger was. That's a fact. So um, I always say reach for the stars and uh, don't let anything stop you from going after your dreams no matter what they are. Okay, now we know one of the greatest pleasures in life is helping people, helping right. people achieve their goals, reach for the stars. Right. Now, to help people, just a takeaway, something simple, because some of this is very complex, and some of it can be broken down to simple elements. If somebody just wants to go ahead and do something tomorrow, what would you advise them to do first? Uh, who is the person? Tell me what their, what their situation is. Okay, let's, let's say a middle-aged person... Mm -hmm who uh, would like to um, get more energy and maybe a little bit more of a uh, positive attitude, less depression, more goal-oriented. Somebody wants to turn around and they realize that the mind is connected to the body, so you have to fix the body before you fix the mind. Okay, the first thing I would probably do for most people out there in the world is something, if you can't, if you can't sustain something, it's no good. So to make them do your workout right now might not be too realistic. So I would say get on a walking program. A walking program. Walking is the most natural form of exercise. If you just did that alone, that would help your body. So I would say, this wants you to walk 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day, getting on a walk, and then add one minute a day, uh, one minute every week to your total, to you build up to 30 minutes three or four times a week. 30 minutes three or four times a week. Right. And um, I would get them on a, and I would try to make them keep the journal on what they're eating and be more aware of what the foods they're consuming and try to get them to at least get rid of their processed foods, eating protein every three hours and uh, making sure they're probably having six to eight glasses of water a day and uh, probably supplementing their diet with a protein shake in between the meals. This is music to my ears because as you know, I have a foundation, the Juvenile Obesity Foundation, yeah. 
where we try to get kids into exercising and their adult role models as well. We walk along from Midland Beach to South Beach once a week Beautiful. on Sundays. Right. And we try to do four miles, but in reality, we can do whatever is comfortable. If people are intimidated by four miles, we do three miles. I even think four miles, miles is too much. Where so that might even, even irritate people. So I think one to two miles. One to two miles. But focus on increasing your speed. So if you're doing, try to build up to one mile in 15 minutes. Excellent. I'd rather them increase the intensity, not increase the duration that wears out the joints. So it's not more is better, Steve. Better is better. Talk to me for a minute about intensity. I know you're a big fan of intensity. Yeah. Well, Steve, I believe that intensity, high intensity training means right now if you was going to do a set of curls. And I said to you, I put a gun to your head. And I said, you're going to do that set. You're going to do, you're going to give me as many reps as you possibly can, or you're going to die right here. Well, well, let me finish. You're going to do as many reps as you possibly can. I mean to the point that if you do get to failure, where the point is that you cannot get another rep, that used every energy in your body to the point that you cannot move that bar, that is 100% high intensity training. So the objective is failure. Right, the, the objective is fa positive failure. Wait, not cheating, where you can no longer get a... So if you train that way, that gets rid of the toxins in the body. It balances things out. It increases the hormones. It gets the circa, but it also helps get uh, fights against disease. The toxins in the body... So intense training goes a long way to getting rid of the toxins in the body that create the stages for disease. So nutritional deficiencies, processed foods, set the stage. When you're not getting enough from nutrition, your glands don't get nourished and the body starts to go on down. When you start eating right, the glands get nourished. When you start training intense, it gets rid of the, in the toxins in the body. If you do those two things, it will fight any disease. I got people that had strokes that, in wheelchairs. This guy's name was Ed Corney. He used to train with Arnold Schwarzenegger. 75 years old, I saw him, he looked amazing. And I see him doing 150 pound shrugs. I shook his hand, it was like, like a vice. I said, how'd you do? I thought you were in a wheelchair. What got you out of that wheelchair? And he said, intense training with this conviction in his eyes. So our bodies are meant to move and we're not moving them. We're not eating right. And therefore we have disease. I'm saying, even if you trained 15 minutes, three days a week, but intense. So you did one set, even one set a day, but you did it right and you trained to failure. It will go a long way to balancing the hormones in the body. You, people say, well, I have a low testosterone. Everybody has a low testosterone today. What do they do? They go to the doctor and get injections. That only masks the problem. It stops your own production of testosterone. But by training, it wakens up the glands, it wakes your hormones up, the right nutrition, and now the testosterone goes back up on its own. You don't need testosterone injections. Or they have a, a lot question. of adverse reactions. Here's the question. People will sometimes go to a gym every day, five days a week, maybe do a step class over and over again. You're saying that's really not a good way to go? A step class? What do you mean a step class? Aerobics? In other words, is it aerobics kind of thing? You go up in a stepper and down in a stepper and it's about an um, hour long. If you compared aerobics to resistance training, you can't compare. So aerobics burns calories. It doesn't change the metabolism. It doesn't change the metabolic rate. When you weight train, you build muscle. You build muscle, you lose fat. You lose fat, you increase your metabolic rate. You increase your metabolic rate, you stimulate the glands. You stimulate the glands. If you could be, listen, you could be sexed into your 90s if the glands are functioning. So what happens is, hormones, once your hormones go, your body's down. You ever see someone in chemotherapy? Sure. Take the biggest bodybuilder in the world, put them on chemotherapy. Why? All the hormones go to nothing. You're good for nothing if you don't have your hormones at an optimum level. But the thing is, what's creating it, Steve? You know what's creating it? No, lack of nutrition, processed foods, chemicals in your body. All those chemicals lowering the hormone level, not moving your body enough. Everything's sitting down, everything's on a computer. All right? So it, something's wrong, and we have to start to question things. Because here we are, the most powerful country in the world, and we're the sickest, and we have the highest level of obesity. I know the level of obesity is about 17% in kids, and I would heard 20 to 30% in adults. What can be done to stop that or reverse it? People have to start to be aware of how the body works. 
I don't think people really realize. If you took the average person and you said to them, you know, um, and they, they, I said, what, what do you eat for breakfast? So I have normal breakfast. I said, well, what, what's your normal breakfast? Have my Cheerios in the morning. Or a cup of coffee. Have a cheeseburger for lunch. Have a donut in between. Everybody has their donuts, right? Right. And then they go home and they have something late at night right before they go to bed. Some processed food. So they're not, not even aware of it. So first thing is education. So let's start to be aware of how we could eat healthier. Do, you know, study how the body works. What we're doing right now, talking about it. So when I didn't know something about sugar, when my A1C was high, what did I do? I went online and I started to look up natural supplements that might help, alpha lipoic acid and cinnamon. Simple foods. I added to my oatmeal, I added whatever, to my coffee. It lowered my sugar 10%. So knowledge is potential power. People don't have enough knowledge. There's a problem, go to the doctor. Doctor gives you a drug. The pharmacy gets rich. The doctor keeps on giving you prescriptions. But we don't get to the root of the problem. But isn't so, it hard to get good information as far as what's going to work in one situation versus another? How could improving your lowering your body fat level and eating healthy do anything but good? So you're saying go by results? No, I'm saying that if somebody comes to you, it doesn't matter if they have problems uh, with the cholesterol level, they have sugar problems, they have anxiety, they have joint problems. They all have problems with the body. By eating properly and by exercising could only improve any condition. That makes sense. Take a level of control over your body. Give it 90 days. I say give everybody, even make a bet with somebody. Get yourself motivated. Right now, I say, Steve, you know what? 90 days, if you could lose another 15 pounds, I got $1,000 cash coming to you. Would you lose it? Absolutely. Did your body change or your mind change right now? This changed. Right. I got you fired up to get that $1,000. The mind controls the body. Mind con the spirit controls the mind. The mind controls the body. So what we have to do is educate people. And that's what we're doing right now with this show. The whole goal is that maybe when somebody who's watching this says, you know what, it makes them think. Start thinking. Start questioning things. I, if, you, if I was a doctor, you come to me right now and you say, Phil, I got a pain in my elbow and my sugar's high. I don't feel too sexual. You know what I'd tell you? I wouldn't say, hey, here's some Viagra, here's some Mobic, and here's some... I would say, guess what, Steve? I want you to lose 15 to 10 percent of your weight. I want you to start eating. I want you to go to a nutritionist. I guarantee you everything will improve if you start. And it doesn't take a lot. You could eat healthy and you could still enjoy it. But the thing is, you have to start to educate people. They have to, and you have to take a responsibility yourself to learn. If you don't know about nutrition, learn. Get a nutrition book. Go online, do research, but don't make uh, the, the pharmaceuticals is the answer. Even depression. You get somebody moving, I got people depressed at my gym, anxiety, depression. I make them move their body, they feel more confident. It's a miracle. So intense training, all right? Learning how to train in, intelligently, not how hard you train, but it's really how smart. The right proper nutrition, the right mental attitude, and set goals for yourself. It doesn't take a lot, but the way we're going right now, things are going to keep them getting worse. And the first thing they should do is start to take the schools and make different menu plans. I want to know why there's pizza and, and all processed foods in the high schools. If you're home, teach your kids to eat healthy. My father used to say, if you don't eat your salad and your steak and whatever he made, you can't have dessert. But today's kids, they actually tell you what to eat. I want my pizza. Because no. they Googled it. Right, well, this was, you know, because everybody's in this entitlement thing. Hey, no, you have to eat your healthy foods. You have to have your vegetables and fruits every day. Sum up what's the most important thing for people that really want to do what is important to do for themselves. Start keeping a journal on what you're eating. Start an exercise program. If you can't get to a gym, start a walking program. Get your body moving. Set a goal for yourself to lose 10% of your weight. Keep a positive attitude. See yourself as you wish to be. And, write, and, and get yourself motivated, make a bet with somebody, whatever it takes to get yourself fired up, and make a commitment that at a certain date, you're going to be at a certain weight. Those are words to live by. I want to thank you for being a great guest today. You're a very wise man, and I hope that we've helped people with some of your wisdom. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.